host, nationally recognized certified appraiser Elizabeth Stewart, Santa Barbara's Treasure Sleuth, will help you put a value on the treasures in your own home. Every time it rains, it rains pennies from heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains pennies from heaven? Stand by. So in three, let's find out two, how one, valuable you're is live. It? Hello, 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 Santa Barbara. It's your Chantress of Everything Valuable and Beautiful, Elizabeth Stewart. And I've got my good friend, Larry Iwerks, with me today. And Larry emailed me a little bit ago and said, you know, I'm doing a benefit. You want to come? And it's at the Rincon Brewing Company in Carpinteria. It's a benefit for the Environmental Defense Center, Wednesday, February 28th in the evening, 5.30 to 7.30. And he's bringing his Ocean All-Stars Band. They are a kick in the butt. They are fantastic. Allie, Andy Babcock is on drums, Dot Thompson on bass, Roger House on lead guitar, and Larry on rhythm guitar and vocals. They're going to be celebrating, obviously, the Environmental Defense Center, but there's new CD entitled Conquistador, which, which questions the aims of conquistadors like the Spaniard Cortez and all other invaders. <laughs> and the EDC will present some of their latest projects and court cases in support of the local environment. And wow, um, it couldn't, this could, this show couldn't happen on a, on a, a worse day or better day to celebrate the Environmental Defense Center. We've got um, reports of some kind of radioactive cache of, I don't know what it is, buried in the ocean today. And then we had a huge environmental spill off our own coast yesterday afternoon's craziness. And so but I want to introduce uh, Larry in a minute, but I also want to introduce Alex Katz. And Alex is with us today, the executive director of the Environmental Defense Center, the only non-for-profit environmental law firm focused on protecting the Central Coast. Now, the EDC, I've actually done appraisals for EDC, which is weird because people will donate art or some kind of valuable piece at, to the EDC. I will appraise that for value. They, it, it, so I, I've been aware of the EDC for years on the front lines for the fight for environment and our local environment for 50 years. Um, founded in response to the oil spill in 1969, um, EDC has stopped dangerous fossil fuel projects along the Central Coast, continues to fight for open space, wildlife, clean air and water, protection of our channel. And Alex is with us. As a, he's the executive director, but he's a former newspaper reporter and public servant who's worked on environmental policy and projects at every level of government, city, state and federal. He lives here in Santa Barbara with his wife and nine year old daughter. Um, Alex, thank you for coming along and tell, well, telling us a little bit about what the EDC is up to. Uh, I appreciate you joining us today. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. It's it, thanks for having having us on the show. And Larry, thanks for doing this. I can't wait to hear the band. Um, <laughs> so again, we're we're this is happening on Wednesday, next Wednesday, February twenty eighth, at uh, the Rincon Brewery in Carpinteria. Um, and can I just start by thanking um, Rincon for, for doing this. Um, Luisa and Mark are the owners and they, they're just great partners of, of EDC. They're great environmentalists. Um, they've got great beer. So please come out and, uh, and we hope to see everybody there on Wednesday um, and hear some great music from the Ocean All-Stars Band. And, and just a little bit about Larry. Larry, is a great artist um, on many levels. He's a great musician, but he's also a great visual artist. And I've done, I don't know how many households where they've collected his work. And um, so I've known of Larry and his work for years and years and years. He coordinated a painting exhibit for Desert Protect Protection called Oasis at the Cabrillo Arts Center, which caught the attention of Senator Ellen Cranston uh, and you see, this is how art can change people's attention, uh, because that exhibit was um, one of the inspirations for Senator Cranston's sponsorship of the California Desert Protection Act. And the result was an invitation to bring Oasis to the Senate Rotunda in Washington, D.C., 
to help convince senators to vote in favor of the bill. Some of the painters who traveled to the Capitol to help the lobby, our own Skip Smith, Manny Lopez, Jeff Barnes, John Iwerks, Geb Turpin, Arturo Teo, and others in the um, exhibit then returned to California to the Palm Desert Civic Center, the College of the Desert, Santa Barbara City College, Santa Maria Civic Center, and onto the Oakland Museum. The desert activist um, artists together with the Senate passed the, the bill in uh, 1995 to the benefit of all the deserts protected. And Larry is an advocate for land protection, locally supporting the Land Trust for Santa Barbara, the Marin Agriculture Land C Trust, Nature Conservancy, of course, the Environmental Defense Center, and the vice president of the Friends of the Channel Islands National Park for a number of years. Now, he's a singer songwriter, as well as a great visual artist. And uh, his songs, he writes to me, express his idea of care for the land, themes of love, songs oh, of great. peace, et cetera. So Larry um, is there. It, actually, he's in our new studio. We There's just lost Richard. your audio. We can barely hear you, Elizabeth. Ah, I wonder what's it's going on. Crazy. And I don't know what happened. Let's see. All right. Well, okay. can you hear well, me? Well, folks. Um, can you hear me better now? Wait a minute. Go ahead. Continue, Elizabeth. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, you're coming through now. Okay. So oh, I was I was talking about Larry's accomplishments, and um, I wanted to say that we have a new recording studio. Richard's I've been setting it up. The radio's got a new location. And I said to Larry, you know, this would be really cool if you actually were in person at the new studio because your sound is going to be so much better. And so Larry jumped on that. That's our, our first guest, um, my first guest in the studio. I'm still at home on Zoom. But Larry, hi. Hello. How are you? I'm hanging in. This uh, is great that you're there. So so you brought, I, I see you're with your guitar. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. yeah there's got, secret camera over there. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> you're there with your guitar and you're there with your harmonica on your shoulder. Yep. Okay. And <laughs> can, we, can we get a little taste of music and then um, just a little bit because... Um, the, this is the celebration locally famous Ocean All-Stars Band. And of course, we are anxiously awaiting their performance next Wednesday, February 28th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Rincon Brewing Company in Carpinteria, the benefit for the Environmental Defense Center. So Larry, give us a taste of something. Okay, I've got a song here called St. Louis. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear the guitar. I only got one mic. Let's see if we can do it. And I'm going to St. Louis. Gonna take my time. Gonna see those old ruins of a copper mine and explore those canyons and the continental divide just to see those americans and the country wide i'm gonna stop there in las vegas just to see the show I'm gonna head down to flagstaff and walk around in the snow Gonna head out toward Albuquerque and way out Roswell Way. Going to Oklahoma City just to spend the day. There's something about folks out here anyway. They don't hesitate to say howdy and help you along the way. It's a good thing that Americans are civil and they're calm because wherever you go, we just all get along. I 
there's something about folks out here anyway they don't hesitate to say howdy help you along the way it's a good thing that americans are civil and they're calm wherever you go we just all get along and so you can fix your car here in town before you head on down that road but don't forget on a road breakdown there's a lesson to be told you won't meet those cool americans while sitting around in a chair just have a flat tire and you'll be meeting her out there somewhere i'm going to st louis gonna take my time gonna see them old ruins of a copper mine and explore those canyons and the continental divide just to see those americans and the countrywide just to see those americans and the countrywide and to see those americans on the countrywide just to see those americans in the countrywide excellent beautiful you know it's it's just great that uh, i love it when you said oh st louis that's what i was born in st louis <laughs> i was thinking okay there this is how did larry guess that well richard's giving us a sign we got to go to quick break but just to qu quickly reintroduce i am celebrating uh the um well first of all larry i works in, in the uh, all-stars ocean all-stars band that will be performing at the Rincon Brewing Company in Carpinteria, Wednesday, February 28th from 5.30 to 7.30 to benefit the uh, Environmental Defense Center. And um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the Environmental Defense Center and some of the things they've done since 1962 with Alex when we get back from the break. So don't turn that down. Back in a minute with Larry and Alex. And the fabulous Larry Iwerks gave us a solo performance there of St. Louis. <laughs> Fantastic. Don't turn that down. All right, we're clear. Sounded great, Larry. So my, my dog is driving me nuts, Richard, my, my new pup. Because <laughs> he's yeah. he he's a he plays with toys. He's I mean, Bear never played with toys, but he this one plays with toys. And the louder the better, you know, the squeaky toys. And um I'm buying these toys that they say indestructible on them. Within about mm, 10 minutes, he's ripped them apart, taken out the squeak, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a misnomer. Same thing with our dog, who is 100 pound, that King Shepherd of ours. When he, as he was growing up uh, in his first 10 years, first of all, he loved old plastic one gallon milk cartons because they made a lot of noise when he chewed on them. He loved that. Yeah, not all that healthy for him. Well, no, he wasn't eating them, but nonetheless, at least he had something to play with. And he usually played with them outside. We did not have them <laughs> in the house. Oh. So yeah, so they, you might you might hear squeaking, uh, and I'll try best to mute, to mute. But yeah, you might. Oh no worries, might. no worries. It's it's just fine. Okay. <laughs> so Larry, I think you you wrote that song, did you not? Oh, Larry, did you write that song, St. Louis? All right. All right. Go ahead and talk to her. Yes, yes, I wrote the song. Haven't recorded it yet until right now. But this is. The... <laughs> and I was supposed to keep it short, but I played the whole song. That's okay. It was great. And, you know, um, I think it's interesting because 
it, it's it's an optimistic song about how Americans get along. <laughs> it's like, okay, That's we right. do. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wait, I guess it's, what is it? Um, lipstick on the pig is what they call it or something like that. <laughs> Cute though. Okay, we are coming back. <laughs> Three. All right, here we go in three, two, one. You're live. Welcome back. It's Elizabeth Stewart, and I'm speaking with my friend Larry Iwerks, who's, hey. uh, gosh, I don't know. He's a poet. He's an artist visually. He's a musician. Um, he's just a, a fantastic creative individual, and uh, I've, I've just admired his artwork for years. And of course, he's a singer songwriter. And he caught the attention of Environmental Defense Center, and they're they are doing a benefit, or actually Larry and his band are doing a benefit at the Rincon Brewing Company in Carpentry. And the the band is is really it's the name is the Ocean All Stars Band, and it's um, got people that have been in the music scene in Santa Barbara for years and elsewhere too. Andy Babcock, Dutt Thompson, and Roger House, and then Larry Iwerks. And uh, I want to talk a little bit to Alex Katz, who's the executive director of the Environmental Defense Center, uh, the only nonprofit environmental law firm focused on protecting the Central Coast. So, Alex, can you tell us a little bit about the things you're proud of that the center has done? Oh, sure. Thanks, Elizabeth. And Larry, That was, the song was great. Uh, it sounded awesome. Um, so if... Um, I'm, I think a lot of people probably are familiar with EDC. Um, we've been here in Santa Barbara for almost 50 years, started after the 1969 oil spill um, as kind of a response to, to that. And we've been around ever since, um, fighting for um, our local environment, for, for open space, for clean water, for wildlife here here on, on the central coast in this special place that we all we all get to live. And Elizabeth, you're right, there's a lot of we're facing a lot of environmental threats now, today, and that is, you know, even becoming even more even more so as climate change um, continues to get worse. Uh, so EDC's been you asked what I was proud of, I think. EDC is probably best known for our work um, fighting the oil and gas industry and stopping new oil and gas projects here on the Central Coast. Um, just last year, the Supreme Court, we got a great um, outcome at the Supreme Court and uh, they they um, upheld our um, a ban on offshore fracking in the Santa Barbara Channel and all along the coast of California. That's one of our cases that we fought for years. Last year, finally, the Supreme Court declined to hear a challenge from the oil industry. So we have a, a ban on that really destructive and harmful form of oil drilling here <clears throat> offshore of California. And so, um, yeah, we're really proud of that. I mean, that that type of drilling just does so much harm to, to the, um, to to wildlife and to um the the ocean so it's it's great that we don't have that in california um so i i yeah. have a question for you so sure. now you're that was a, a case before the supreme court so you must have legal representation right so well, is that how, how does that work we are a law firm so we are we we represent other um nonprofit organizations and other partners, uh, other clients. And so, um, you know, we are a nonprofit public service law firm. Um, we don't, you know, charge clients for a lot of our cases. Um, and so we are the, we are the lawyers. <laughs> um, so are yeah. you, are you, are you a lawyer? No, I am not a lawyer. I, um, I am, uh, you know, I'm, I work with lawyers and, I'm married to a lawyer. Okay, excellent. Okay, and so, yeah. um, so the the oil spill thing—that's and yeah. the fracking. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, um, so and we're, I, I mean, this is, this is, a, I mean, we have, uh, you know, oil and we have oil businesses here and, you know, we've had some really bad spills here in Santa Barbara, including, you know, the one in 2015 um, uh, up on the Refugio uh, State Beach. Um, and that one was, you know, extremely uh, damaging. Um, a pipeline, if you remember, a pipeline broke on onshore yeah. and and leaked a ton, you know, a huge amount of oil. And so we're, you would think that that pipeline would not be, you know, no one would, would want to use that pipeline again, but um, we're, we're still fighting now to stop uh, one of the oil companies from restarting that platform. That was all Exxon. Exxon just sold all of their stuff to this other company called Sable. And they're now trying to restart the same pipeline that broke back in 2015 and um, is still corroded and degraded and, and you know, it, it shouldn't be used, but they're going to still try to restart it so they can, which would allow them to restart their offshore platforms. Um, I see. I so see. That we're still fighting those fights now. I see. Oh, Richard's giving us a sign. We got to go to quick break. Um, I want to hear another good success story when we get back from, from break. And I also want to hear another song from Larry. So mm -hmm. sit tight, everybody. We're talking with Alex Katz, who's the executive director of the Environmental Defense Center in Santa Barbara. And we're also my good friend, Larry Iwerks, who is kind of a creative and a renaissance man. He just, he's singer, songwriter, visual artist, poet, et cetera. Just a great person. And, um, great musician too and he's actually doing a benefit for the environmental defense center the benefit is going to be at the rink on bring company in carpinteria wednesday february 28th from 5 30 to 7 30 and um, we'll see how we can benefit the environmental defense center also alex that's another topic i wanted to bring up how can people support your the work that you guys do is another question for when we get back from the break don't turn that down back in a minute Okay, you're clear. Did she she did. She took off. I'm gonna play the stuff. This is the place that talks about uh, Santa Barbara. I'm Ben Hayes of the News Center. I'm Ed okay. Lyle. Steve Cates, uh, okay. Dr. Sky. I'm Simon. Ed Jerome. I'm Noah. <laughs> I'm Mark <laughs> Schneider. I'm Diane Duda. <laughs> My name's Andy star. Caldwell. I'm Erica, first the off. Queen of yeah. Keen. I'm Scott they said Dweck. It was the third Carl Sussman. I'm Michael Sell. I'm Steve Forcell. No. I'm Dale Francisco. I'm Tom Woodrow. I'm Elor. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. All right, let's Just see. add another R. Just add another R. Add another R. Add another R. John added another H, and he said <laughs> the first one's silent. Oh, man. Okay, what are we doing here? Hang on. I want. Uh, let's see if this is going to take me where I want. It's not. <clears throat> The machines are rebelling. Well, it's uh, le less of rebellion and more of just trying to make sure that I can do what it is that I've always done. Um, That's hard to move a studio. Well, believe it or not, we were only off the air for four hours. Wow. Yeah, and that is quite astounding. You had some help. Uh, big time and thrift shop it was a combination of les and me uh and then two engineers our our old engineer and our new engineer and then he had the new engineer actually had two one is in a sort of an intern who came mm -hmm. down from santa maria and the other is his i guess you might call him his uh the the old engineer's protege i take that back the two were for the old engineer one mm -hmm. was an intern and one's protege or uh, apprentice, if you will. In the heart that's All right, here we go. 
in three, two, one, you're live. You are live. Um, this is Elizabeth Stewart talking with Larry Iwerks, who is the musician for the benefit for the Environmental Defense Center coming up Wednesday, February 28th from 5.30 to 7.30. And uh, the director of the Environmental Defense Center, Alex Katz, is here with us to talk a little bit about what the Defense Center does. Um, so we were talking about the, the fracking that was halted by the work of the Environmental Defense Center over a period of fighting for years uh, on, on the behalf of, of clean water, clean air, et cetera. Tell us another success story, Alex. Sure. Well, EDC has been involved in, you know, a, a lot of, of successful cases over the years um, on, on oil and gas projects. So, you know, we've been very successful at stopping these big infrastructure projects all up and down the coast. Mm -hmm. You know, we stopped with working with uh, groups like cause we stopped a, a new power plant from being built on the, on the coast down in Oxnard. We've um, stopped, you know, oil processing facilities from being built here in Santa Barbara. Um, so we, you know, I think Santa Barbara and this part of the coast would look a lot different if it wasn't for groups like like EDC and a, a lot of our partners, um, you know, working on these cases. I, I do want to talk a little bit about what we're doing right now, in addition to the work on oil and gas, you know, trying to stop um, stop com oil companies from drilling up in North County, you know, around um, aquifers that people rely on for drinking water. We're also working up in the mountains here in the Los Padres forest to try to stop some commercial, you know, very large scale commercial logging projects that would do a lot of damage to um, Chumash cultural resources and to habitats up there. And one thing I wanted to mention that is specific to Carpinteria, since we're talking about our event in Carpinteria next week, um, we are working on a new marine protected area off the off the coast of Carpinteria um, that would, you know, permanently um, protect the the ocean here from from oil and gas and from other types of industry. Um, does a lot to protect, you know, uh, habitats and, and um, wildlife in the ocean. Um, and I, I hope I'm going to pronounce this right. It's called the Mishapsho, Mishapshno MPA, uh, which stands for Marine Protected Area. EDC is um, working to try to get that that approved and, and done so that we have um, another area of protected ocean off the coast of Carp. Well, all that sounds fantastic. Larry, how about another song? Okay. Are you ready? I don't know if oh, I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing about art is you can go forward and backward in time. So I went back about 100 years or more to the old stagecoach that come up Stagecoach Road and over San Marcos Pass. And uh, I call the song Paradise. I oh and the merry oh, I can see the light shining today. Seemed low, but it was time to go, and that's that's when I caught that stage. Hey ho, down that bumpy road, you can still see the tracks to this day. I ride so between heaven and hell, but at least I'm in paradise today. The winds blow and the oak trees know that soon will come a rainy day. Not now, I said, holy cow, as I peered out from that stage. The horses go, and they seem to know that what will be the upcoming prize. 
hey ho, don't you know that soon we'll be in paradise? Along the hidden trail, it was hot there, but to no avail. And then the ground started shaking too. And then the night turned black. What are we gonna do? And the merry oak, I can see the light shining today. Seemed low, but it was time to go. And that's when I caught that stage. Hey ho, down the bumpy road, you can still see the tracks to this day. I ride so between heaven and hell, but at least I'm in paradise today. Paradise today. Paradise today, paradise today. Well, that's fantastic, Larry. Thank you. Let's go to a quick break. When we get back from the break, I want Alex to tell us. Well, actually, I want Larry to ask Alex a few questions about the, the work of the Environmental Defense Center, because I, I think Alex knows a bit a bit more about them than I do. So don't turn that down. Back in a minute with Larry Iwerks and the, the Environmental Defense Center Yo, Alex Katz, don't turn that down. Back in a minute. All right, you are clear. Yes, indeed. Larry Iwerks. So you uh, sideline as an optometrist, right? <laughs> I think that's how we started. <laughs> Back in Holland. I, uh, I have always uh, envied um, musicians not necessarily vocalists because I, I myself am a vocalist. But we should those, sing together. <laughs> but those, well, hey, maybe we can work something out. I've got a song I'd love. Maybe we can play with. I, I want to learn how to play this thing. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Fine. And for my next number, <laughs> uh, I tried to learn to play the guitar, but my hands would not play well with the uh, the neck of the guitar i i could not get it my fingers around but i have heard that there they, is actually a technique for doing that and they have different width necks too exactly yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um my wife actually has a guitar that we bought uh, a used guitar that we bought at that place over on uh santa barbara street and oh yeah folk boat music yeah i mm -hmm. think that's where we got it wasn't that expensive either? I think it was there. There may have been another place. Oh, I miss those guys. Then there's another place over across the parking lot from uh, um, uh, the grocery store there. Ralph's used to be there. It's now a grocery outlet bargain market. I actually bought a bunch of picks mm -hmm. and I was going to learn on that guitar to play. Maybe the neck is too wide for me. Mm -hmm. um, my dad played the ukulele. Oh, those are fun. Along with this. He never had a, a neck uh, brace for his... Uh, or support for his uh, harmonica. Um, he didn't play the harmonica that often, but anyway. So I've always thought, why oh, it would sure be nice because then I could make my own music. If yes. Because I've written, I've written two songs, but it's the first song that I wrote back in 1990, maybe 92, 93. And I can't find the lyrics. I know what it's written on. I typed it actually. Ooh. Yeah. And I've got it somewhere in a file folder. Mm -hmm. 
in a full in a file cabinet there at the house and i've got i've been going through and shredding stuff uh oh very very <laughs> carefully okay so i know i haven't shredded it yet You're good. anyway uh so uh but that's something i would love to learn to do is is to play uh to play the guitar and also to uh, play the harmonica and obviously it is possible because you've proven that to play them both at the same time oh good which that's the equivalent of uh, patting your head, rubbing your stomach, or vice versa. <laughs> and huh? chewing gum and walking. And chewing gum. Okay. <laughs> Guess what? We're coming back. In three, two, one, you're live. Welcome back to the show. It's Elizabeth Stewart, and I'm talking with Larry Iwerks of the Ocean All Stars Band. And I'm also talking with Alex Katz. And the reason is that, of course, Alex Katz is the executive director of the Environmental Defense Center. And um, they're, Larry and his band are doing a benefit for the center. And as you can hear in the background, that's my new puppy with the squeak toy. So I'm going to let Larry ask Alex a few questions of Alex. Go ahead, Larry. Oh, hi, Alex. And thank you for uh, uh, your great group and protecting the environment. And, and yes, you know, you talked about the uh, pipeline spill up by... Uh, refugio and of course you know being by the coast metal rusts pretty easy and so i was concerned and have been concerned for many years about the diablo uh, nuclear power plant which was supposed to be i believe uh decommissioned, decommissioned thank you mm -hmm. um in, in a year or so but they've added another 45 years i'm really concerned about that and um and why we need so much power on the coast when the towns of Morro Bay and, and San Luis Obispo are so small. They say it's to put it on the grid, but I come to understand that a lot of times they pump water back uphill on the Sierra uh, to bring it back down uh, in summer months. But it seems a shame to pollute the groundwater with nuclear power just to pump water uphill. That's my uh, course observation but i wonder if you're all doing anything on the nuclear power plant okay I, we're yeah, not I, 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 all right i think i'm back um that's a, a great question um larry uh, edc hasn't been involved with the power the um the power plant up until now um uh, but I think that might change uh, pretty soon. Uh, so there's, I can't really get into that too much at this point. Um, but I, I can say, I, I think you're right. Uh, what, what about, um, you know, the, the, the plant, um, uh, you know, the sort of the issues with the plant, w one kind of problem there is, you know, it is, it, um not fossil fuel uh, but it it does kind of uh take up a lot of space on the grid so other it kind of discourages other um you know uh clean energy from uh being developed and from from adding to the grid so we're very focused on offshore wind right now we've been working on that for for many years and we're trying to kind of um have you know be part of that of that um of of the the policy and the law around that so that those you know wind um the wind uh industry in california is done in a way that is you know going to be uh, not harmful to to animals not harmful to habitats you know located in the right places and so on i'm wondering about a power loss over the line I've studied those power corridors out across the desert coming from the Lake Mead. And I come to understand a lot of power is lost coming over the lines. So I'm wondering how come we have these uh, centralized power units that lose power over the line when as we build uh, homes and, or even retrofit homes that we yeah. can have more of a local power that we don't lose the power over a long line. Well, I know in, here in, in uh, Santa Barbara, 
in in Santa Barbara County uh, that there's a lot of people who are working on that. Um, I'm not really an expert on 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 that, so I'm I'm not going to try to get into it right now. But th there are some really good people, really smart people working on that problem. Well, I hope so. I'm so concerned about these big solar farms out in the desert and even up near Carrizo Plain. The fact that they have to use rot water to wash the uh, solar panels in a desert environment is not good. But anyway, I can keep complaining. <laughs> if I may, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Um, and this is based upon some of the arguments against what you're doing in terms of especially uh, petroleum, you know, uh, digging for oil and, and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. uh, how the, the list in the, there's this laundry list of all of the things that we make with petroleum on and on and on. And then that uh, the wind and solar are not sustainable because you still have to build. How are you going to generate the electricity to build the materials uh, to uh, uh, to construct these uh, uh, windmills as well as solar panels and, and those kinds of things? How do you address that aspect of, um, you know, we can't move forward uh, with this because it, you know, too many of our products and so forth are created from and et cetera, et cetera. How do you address that? Well, they don't have to be. I mean, we've, we've got a, you know, we've done a lot with, with oil over, you know, the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, and that's true. Um, and at this point, we are in a crisis. Um, you know, we can't keep burning oil and burning things to generate energy um, because we are, you know, the, the longer we go, the, the more damage it's going to do to the planet. Um, you know, it's we, we don't really have a choice at this point. We have to transition away from the mill. Uh, so um you know clean energy is 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 uh very effective you know it's it's a uh, it's kind of a there's a a lot of of development going on we're generating a ton of energy from clean energy and we just have to keep doing that i mean it's one of those things you know when i was growing up nobody ever even thought of an electric car and now they're everywhere. I mean, these things change and we just have to kind of, we, we have to kind of keep, keep pushing it if we want the planet to still be habitable um, in, in 50 or hundred years. And I, I understand what you're saying. I think back, I always go back to the late 1800s to the early 1900s and the transition from the horse drawn or uh, a beast of burden drawn uh, vehicles to yeah. the automobile now yeah obviously yeah. you had a problem on the roads with droppings i mean that was one of the probably one of the uh, major problems you had because that wasn't sanitary for starters uh, among other things well guess what we have resolved that problem and now it's time to transition to something new right yeah i i think that's that's a good way to put it and the technology, I know a lot of people complain about the batteries and this whole issue with lithium. Well, maybe there's something else out there that someone is working on right now. Maybe Larry's working on this in his garage. Um, I've even heard of yeah. hot water powered vehicles. I actually remember a story. I think it was in the 70s or early 80s where a guy had developed an engine that ran on water. The hydrogen. The, or a hydrogen. Exactly. Yeah. From the water. Split the water. Yeah. So it's like, but of course there are powers that be that they don't want that to happen, right? There's two. Well, yeah, I mean, I I think in the mainly the the oil and companies don't want that to happen, right? And, right. And they continue to try to be here as long as they can make money. So, right. Yeah. Okay. All right, back to you, Elizabeth. Okay, so I wanted to ask how we can support the EDC, Alex. Well, um, come out to, to Rincon Brewery next Wednesday, listen to some great music, 
um, have have some have buy some beers and let your server know that you're here for the EDC event. And so the um, the brewery will donate ten percent of all the proceeds from those from from that beer to to EDC, which is so nice of them to do. And thank you again um, to Luisa and Mark, who are the the owners of Rincon, for for partnering with us. Um, the easiest thing to do is check out our website. It's environmentaldefensecenter.org. Um, sorry we make you type the whole thing out, but that's just the way it is. Environmentaldefensecenter.org. We've got a big event coming up in June that we are inviting everybody to. It's a really fun um, kind of gala um, party that we're doing um, at the Stowe House in Goleta. We do this every year. It's called Green and Blue. And... I, I would just encourage everyone to to come out. There's it's there's going to be great food, a very good program. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go to a quick break, and then I want to find out how we can best help uh, the Environmental Defense Center with our money when we get back to the break. And now that seems like it was and you're clear. Just yesterday. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. It didn't, uh, all that cool backup vocals. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. I still, I still remember uh, as a kid growing up listening, and of course, one of my teens, the music where they. Uh, well, I, I don't know if it was actually the Carpenters who started doing this. But oh, were they were great, weren't who they? Did overdubbing, okay, vocal overdubbing. I mean, mm -hmm. that it was their harmonies. Okay. They created in the studio. Yes. One track at a time. Yes. And I remember, uh, I remember that. And if I also uh, remember, for example, Barry Manilow, mm -hmm. he would do that too. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, was when it was tape. Mm -hmm. You know. Why? Right. Uh, there's there's one song in particular that he did called One Voice, mm. and it's talking about you know you need to you need to get your voice out there kind of thing, right? Okay. And he's then doing the. Uh, uh, ba, 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 da, 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 da. All right, no uh -huh. words, just the, that. And there's harmony. Mm -hmm. There's, there's. I don't know if it's four parts, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, you know. And so uh, I'm thinking, wow. I mean, you can really do that today, of course, digitally, but it's the same process. That's what that gal Sean Tease did on that song you played earlier. The sun will shine, ah. and she's got like three or four different vocals. They're all her, but she just created a beautiful the chorus. Sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's amazing what you can do. I mean, I I I early on when I would rip a CD before the the, the huge appeal of YouTube and so forth, mm -hmm. where you could pull the audio and so forth, uh, I would get a stereo. I would get a, a true stereo left right separation kind of thing, mm -hmm. and I would take one track and flip it, okay. and then I would mix it mono, and it would push whatever was similar frequencies, push them into the background, didn't eliminate them. Mm -hmm. Like a so you created for yourself a sing along, yeah, track, right? Cool, like karaoke, yeah. But you could still hear them in the background, sure. And uh, then at one point, for whatever reason, I don't know what they did to the, I don't know what they did, but they uh, they somehow prevented you from doing that because when you mixed it into mono after flipping it, it, oh, it warbled, and I don't know what the hell. Oh. That was All right, Elizabeth, this is our final segment. You have five minutes. Where are you? Five minutes. <laughs> Here we go. In three, two, one. You are live. Welcome back. It's Elizabeth Stewart. I'm speaking with Alex Katz, the executive director of the Environmental Defense Center. And my good friend Larry Iwerks brought to my attention that he was doing a benefit for the EDC. And that's taking place on the 28th. This is coming Wednesday, uh, February 28th from 530 to 730 at the Rincon Green Company in Carpinteria. And I wanted to know, Alex, two questions. How do we support you with our money at the Environmental Defense Center? And also, if people have a concern, can they can they approach the center with a concern? Yes. Those two questions. Thank you for both of those questions. So, um, yes, um, please, if there's an issue, please give us a call. You know, we're we're you know, we're here to look out for um for for the central coast so if if there's a environmental problem 
or if somebody's dumping something into a river, or if you see something that is, you know, a, a, some a, an issue, yes, please give us a call and we can try to figure out the best way to deal with that. Um, and um, how can people give us money? Well, we <laughs> we are, um, you know, we're a nonprofit. We rely on individual donations. That's kind of our biggest source of, of um, revenue here. We're small, but we're very effective for, for our size. Um, so, you know, again, you can go to our website, environmentaldefensecenter.org. And I think the what I would ask people to do um, is check out our event that's happening on June 9th. It's called Green and Blue. It's our annual event. We've been doing this for years. Um, it's a really fun event. We have an auction. We have a silent auction. We have music. There's great food. Uh, there's going to be a good program. Um, and, you know, maybe five, six hundred people who are, you know, um, who are all, you know, concerned about our environment, who want to protect this, this part, this great part of the state that we all get to live in. Um, so again, June 9th, um, green and blue. And just uh, you know, consider coming out and joining us or or being a sponsor. And that's that's our that's all I can ask for right now. <laughs> and if I, if I may so just toss in here, first of yes. all, thank you for never mentioning climate change, because in my opinion, my observation is it has nothing to do with climate change. It has to do with the one thing I always bring up if someone were to talk about it. I say, look, don't you think we should clean up the planet, period? So I, I think that that's an important point. It is. It, it's like, who cares about the science? I mean, it's like parents telling their kids, go clean your room. Well, why? I, I don't care. Well, in time, you might. You know, you've seen the hoarders. You've seen the hoarder programs, that kind of thing. Uh, so thank you for, uh, for doing that. Okay. So I, I would well, love for Larry. Go uh, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah. I mean, we're, we are very concerned about climate change, but, and, you know, it's, it's uh, not just a sort of a, an abstract thing. I mean, look at all the fires in our state, you know, look at all the erosion going on along the coastline. This is happening now. And yes, we are very concerned about it. Mm -hmm. So Larry, will you sing us out? Sing us out. Sure. Larry. Yeah, here we go. Come on the shoe mash, come on the people, come on the shoe mash, come on, let's rock and roll. Down at Magoo, and Tahigas too, down at Anapamu, Anacapa too. Come on the people, come on, let's rock and roll. I like Kuyama, up at Muta Flat. I've seen the canyon, not gonna jump in that. Come on to Shumash. Hi, I'm Chris Cullen. Hi. All right, you're clear. All right, Elizabeth, thank you very much. That was wonderful. Oh, thank, you. Elizabeth. thank you, guys. I'm sorry about the squeaky toy. Oh, uh, hey, we couldn't. We couldn't. I don't think I heard it. I, I couldn't hear it over here. No, I was fine. That's, we that's it. great. Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Larry. All right. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. I uh, hope you can make it on Wednesday to the brewery. Yes, I will we'll be there. In person. Okay, Larry, I'll see you there. Thank you, Alex. All right. Thanks, Richard. But you're welcome. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, take these out because I don't need them anymore. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Let me do this, 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 and then bring in our other people. There we go. Letting them all in now. Okay, there we are. Uh, and what's the other one here? I got to do D e and E. There we go. That was fun. Oh, thank you. And I just, as you probably heard, I just faded you down. Good. And it worked out really well. There we go.
Hello, hello, hello. Richard, how are you? No. There we go. Hello there. <laughs> how do I see or listen to your um, um, show? I just, you know, we've talked about that. You tell us your story. Gossip. Pardon? My show, Tell Me Your Story or Garden Gossip. Tell me your story. Oh. Well, it streams live uh, on Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m. and uh, Wednesdays at 9 a.m., as well as Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. here on our stream, which is AM 1290 KZSB. And tell me again, the times on um, during the week is impossible for me. So Sunday at 7. Sunday, 7 a.m. and p.m., Oh, okay. Then 1 a.m. Monday morning. Woohoo! I'm yeah, not going to do that. <laughs> it's going to be the 7 or 7 for me. Obviously, the weekdays, 8 a.m. Monday through Friday, and then 9 a.m. Wednesday. But uh, those are the three. Now, you're probably going to hear three different interviews on a Sunday and Monday. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't play the same one because I have so many in the can, as it were. <laughs> all right well, here we cool. we're letting somebody else in that's probably olivia oh chris cullen yay oh. hi <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god the gang's all here yeah lisa's Almost. running a little late but she had to go collect some money she'll be here in a bit though well, she's going to be even later because I hope she comes by here first and gives it to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. That's got to be <laughs> You know, so spontaneous donations we always appreciate. Oh. I know. I always tell my mom, I sure wish I was a gold digger, but I never was. So I just have my to lawyer says that there are serial um, uh, uh, marrier types in Santa Barbara, women who have oh. this deal where they find a, a catch and they marry the guy, divorce the guy, take the money and go to the next. I never knew there was such a thing, but there are a number of them right here in our fair city. How do you oh. like Chris? Watch out. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Lisa know. already took all his money. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Well, if somebody's going to go after her. <laughs> he needs to find himself an old rich gal. Yeah. <laughs> How's business, Chris? I had, oh, oh, great. Just marvelous. marvelous. Yeah. Yeah. You're hitting, you're hitting all those gardens after the rains or you just have to kind of ratchet it back? Actually, we're waiting we're slow for right now. to dry out. Yeah. And it's the only time off we get. It's wonderful. Well, our guys just go and, and, and mess with our hedges. We yeah. have the most manicured hedges this winter. <laughs> because yeah. what else are you going to do? You yeah. can't hardly walk around and... Yeah. And um, how's the Biltmore doing? Is is Adam finished with that project? I don't know about it, but no, I no, no, definitely not. But the but the Coral Casino opened. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's street. what. I, that's sorry. I always think of them as one and the same. But he was doing the landscape on the Coral Casino. He's supposed to be doing my my Psycad collection, and he's and he says I just can't do it. I can't do it because of the Coral Casino. And I thought. I said, well, I don't care. Then give me a referral. I'm going to call around and get somebody else. And I was thinking about you guys. And um, and then he just went crazy because he wants to trade labor for psych ads. So oh. I said, well, that sounds good to you, but you better get your Benucci's over there and get her done. And now it's just, you know, it's just we should all be planting cranberry. Is he <laughs> from, uh, yeah, really. Is he from? Uh, uh, oh, Royal he Seco. Jimenez? Oh, 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 Alex, you know, Alex, oh. Chris's son. Yeah. Chris Ortonez's son, Alex, that did the, yeah. the drain work at, yeah, at the Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Thing. I'm sure they did. They made a fortune off of that bid, but, but um, how about your personal garden, Chris? The water is not wrecking it. No, I don't have a personal garden. All of my plants are in containers. On but you have a landscape. No, I don't. Not oh. anymore. Not anymore. I, I have. Uh, they moved, you know. Uh, oh, live, I didn't know that. Yeah, we live in Santa Barbara now, and I just have the. Uh, we're renting a place, and I have the 
you know, some plants in their cans on top of the ground, you know. <laughs> so what are you going to do? I don't know. All right, folks, stand by. We are about to do our thing here. Right. Oh, three, two, one, you are live. Ooh, welcome to Garden Gossip, a breath of fresh airwaves. Hi, I'm Chris Cullen. And I'm Leanna Finley. And Leanna, Lisa is probably on her way. But uh, that being as it may, Garden Gossip is brought to you by Montecito Landscape, creating beautiful gardens for over 50 years. We specialize in garden design and installation. So call today for your free home garden consultation. Call 969-3984 or go to MontecitoLandscape.com. This is another action-packed week. The rain was awesome. And two weeks until the Santa Barbara International Orchid Show. So we will hear from the Orchid Show director, Olivia Sorgman and Loris Rose, who we have right here uh, in the studio. And um, our intrepid weather girl, Leanna, will give us the update on the storm and an update on Lake Kachuma. Leanna, what do you know? Uh, well, I'm here to give garden news first. Oh, okay. And if we want to talk about, yeah, I think we have plenty to talk about. Everyone knows it rained a lot. Uh, everyone knows <laughs> you know, I mean, if you don't know that, look it up yourself. I have garden news. That's what I'm here for. Uh, Lost meat and nursery. The spring bulbs are in stock, including begonias, cannas, dahlias, gladiolas, lilies, and more. And their sale this week is $2 off organic soil booster. Their winter hours are 8 to 4, Monday through Saturday. Uh, well, obviously, we'll be talking a lot about it, but the Santa Barbara International Orchid Show is coming up March 8th through 10th. And in collaboration with the Orchid Show, there'll be many open houses at the nurseries, including our favorite nursery, Cal Orchid. Yay, Cal. They're going to be having their fabulous spring open house March 8th, 9th, and 10th from 9 to 4 daily. Loris can tell us even more about that. Uh on Saturday, March 23rd, more than 30 museums and cultural institutions are participating in the annual SoCal Museums Free for All, a celebration of the region's vibrant cultural landscape. Admission to the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History and the Santa Barbara Museum of Art are both on the list. Reservations are recommended, but everyone loves a free day at a museum. Uh, let's see, the Botanic Garden has a million things going on, classes, you can visit sbbotanicgarden.org for all the information. Lotus Land's back open for this season. They opened last week on the 15th. You can visit lotusland.org for all the information and become a member. Uh, coming up this weekend, oh, that's this weekend, this Sunday, El Presidio de Santa Barbara presents a free family fun event of historical games and crafts. Sunday, February 25th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., Enjoy a free, family-friendly day exploring Santa Barbara's history through fun games, arts, and crafts. Take part in an interactive experience celebrating the diverse communities of the Presidio neighborhood, including the Chumash, Spanish, Mexican, Japanese, and Chinese cultures. So that is free, 11 to 2. Bring your kids. There's going to have origami, rock painting, lantern crafting, all kinds of fun stuff, and games. Wow. Um, if you're a foodie or want to be a foodie or are curious about foodies, there's gonna there is a farmers market foodie stroll and gourmet dinner with Bouchon Chef recurring weekly on Tuesdays from three to seven. You can join Chef Vicken Tavishian. I hope I'm saying his name right. A Bouchon at the Tuesday afternoon farmers market for an informative foodie stroll followed by a three course dinner at Bouchon. Admission is $125. You can reserve your spot at bouchonsantabarbara.com. And this is fun. I'm glad they're bringing it back. A foodie extravaganza, the 805 Night Market is going to be happening the weekend after the Orchid Show, March 16th through 17th. Um, there's like 40 food trucks and it's all sorts of 
fun. I didn't make it last time, so I'm glad it's two days this time. It's 3 to 10 p.m. both days. Go to 805nightmarket.com and sign up for a ticket. The tickets are free, but you can only get them online. None will be offered at the door. And last but not least, it's summer camp registration time. Jeez, it's February, but... <laughs> Uh, at the Botanic Gardens, garden members will have first access to their Summer Camp 2024. Garden mem members get access starting March 5th, and the general public registration opens March 19th. So get ready to... Uh, I wish they had adult summer camps, but whatever. I guess they'd have to pay you to go, right? <laughs> you have to anyway. volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's have a quick way to happiness. We'll go for a break and we'll come back with our guests, Olivia and Loris. Uh, so how about be industrious? Because I know these ladies certainly have been industrious and are only going to be more the next two weeks. Oh, two weeks and three days, right? Until it's all over with. <laughs> Uh, work is not always pleasant, but few are unhappier than those who lead a purposeless, idle and bored existence. Sorrow itself can be eased by simply getting busy at something. Morale is boosted to high highs by accomplishment. In fact, it can be demonstrated that production is the basis of morale. People who are not industrious dump the workload on those around one, and they tend to burn one. burden one. The way to happiness is a high road when it includes industriousness that leads to tangible production. Amen. Boy, that's you and Leanna and Lisa. Me, me and, and myself and Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are you guys are too much well anyway it's time for a break so stay tuned you're listening to garden gossip we'll be right back okay you're clear thank you, you. Sure, are you sure lisa's gonna make it chris no not at all <laughs> 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 I called her, you know, and she said, Oh, look at that, look at that. She'll be here. <laughs> uh, She'll race in like she didn't miss a beat, you know. Yeah. You know, I was Christmas shopping and I was at the art museum's gift store because I like to get my gifts locally like that. And I was getting the Santa Barbara Monopoly game and the and they were all in a dither because they said, I'm not sure we have any extra ones because Lisa Cullen was coming to pick up a bunch of them. Oh, really? Yeah. You know where I saw they were selling them? At Rusty's Pizza. No way. Yeah. Wow. So somebody instrumental in that thing must be. A must be, you know, money. because they have it at Rusty's for sale. I've never been to a Rusty's Pizza. <laughs> I've never seen the. the uh... I saw it at the museum store. I love that little yeah. store. I Me too. Anytime I walk by it, I stroll through it, even if I don't buy something. I just, yeah. It's fun to stop and look at. They've got globes in there that are like Atmos clocks. You know, they don't take bad. They spin slowly, but they don't take bad. I've seen those, yeah. I love that. Quite expensive. My husband and I actually went to the museum a couple months ago and toured around. It had been years since I've gone in there. I go in the yeah. store all the time, but yeah. They have a they have a free day on is it Sunday or something? Monday. Monday they're closed, I think. I don't know. They have they have one day a week. I think that they're free. Have have you guys not, met I'm Olivia before? No. I'm Leanna. Hi. 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 Olivia. I'm Chris. Nice to meet you both. And Lisa Olivia is, is, is the star of our show this year because um, through word of mouth, we, we found her and she's um, behind the scenes on a, really just about every major event in this town. Extremely gifted in, in event management and ticketing, especially. And um, so it's been really fun to visit with her and get her feedback and get our show moving forward in different ways and every time i had some you know me i when people when i say okay, i had an idea in I it. three two one you're live who welcome back to garden gossip with chris cullen and liana finley of montecito landscape and our guests what are you what are you doing I'm just talking from the mouth. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, she's editing as we as we go. I'm surprised you're not putting a piece of tape over my mouth. Anyway, uh, uh, we're back. So uh, take it away, Leanna. 
Well, Garden Gossip's brought to you by Agritur. I lost Brasidas and Loda. In fact, Agritur has everything your garden needs, including organic solutions to any garden problem, and their trained professionals can help you, and they will help you, and it's a fun place to go. So uh, go see Zeferino, actually. Is who you Zeferino. Are. Zeferino's yeah. the man. That's, he's the man. Yeah. Uh, so, Agriturf, you can call them at 569-2257. I say it every week. I don't know why we print out a script, because Chris can't read. <laughs> anyway, let's introduce our guest. Santa Barbara International Orchid Show director, Olivia Sorgman, and the ever-fabulous Loris Rose. Thank you, Leanna. And Olivia is our show manager. So she is at the helm, man. She is moving the dials like the, like the Wizard of Oz back there. I mean, wow. there's no dust on her slippers anymore, man. Um, so we're very happy to have her um, join us this year. And for those of you out there who say, oh, I went to the show a couple of years ago. Well, you know what? It's always different. It we is. try to switch up the floor. But now we've got Olivia in here, too. And she's percolating on a different um, temperature. And so we've got all kinds of new things and and um, that are happening. And we want, you know, the show, as everybody knows, uh, 2020, we had the show was already all party dress on judges with clipboards and then the governor oh, said right. you had to you couldn't open so we didn't get to sell one ticket but we had all those bills to pay so we have been working hard on that and we had a fantastic show last year just fantastic oh, i was so um, busy yeah it was, was mind-boggling and so gratifying everybody was so happy to have that show back because there's very few orchid shows that are big like this anymore it costs a lot to put them on and it takes a a real jewel of a city to pull it off and nurture something like that and santa barbara is definitely a jewel of a city i've lived here since i was five i just i've been all around the world many different times and seen a lot of places but i'm I'm always happy to come home. It's very special and it's special for gardeners. Um, everything just grows better. The mountains are right there. The ocean's right there. And every foreign grower that comes through here walks around and we're talking and invariably they'll say the air is different here. Oh, and yeah. it, just, it just is, right, Chris? It's just great for yeah. growing. So, um, so we're very lucky to have um, uh, you know, beautiful show like this held in a beautiful city like this. And, and I encourage anybody who thinks that they've seen it and that's that, oh, honey, come come to this one and participate. We're going to do flow yoga and um, on Thursday, and we're going to do an orchid sound bath. And I'm going to let Olivia talk about these events because it's her connections that have gotten them off the ground. I always I love that idea of a sound bath like they do in Japan, where you walk into the forest and you just are quiet with that serenity and the vibe of the trees and whatnot just puts you in another space. So I wanted to incorporate that because I felt that the the exhibit floor is to me a kind of a spiritual kind of a place. You know, I'm Buddhist. I don't go to the church on Sunday. And I, I, but I go to a greenhouse and I breathe in that air and I look into those flowers and honestly, it's transformational. So Olivia has got something cooked up for that on Thursday, which is a, an event that you pay for and that helps to sustain the show. And, um, and on a Saturday, we're going to do orchids after dark. So I'll let her tell you all about that too. Um, before I turn it over to her, I'll, I'll, review a little points of interest as far as the exhibitors and vendors. It is an international show. It's not a mall show um, where we have um, mostly um, local guys and a couple of green plant sellers. We got orchid growers coming from Peru and Colombia and Ecuador and Taiwan. And, and for a long time, we have not seen Heidner hair of Mukoyama um, Orchids, and that's a very prestigious name in uh, Japan. We have had uh, Tokyo Orchid Nursery, extremely prestigious, and Suwada, um, um, and Seed Engai, but we haven't had Mukoyama, despite the fact that they're very big in cymbidiums. Cymbidiums are hard to find. Everybody wants a cymbidium, 
Santa Barbara used to be famous for cymbidiums. The, the growers who were breeding them just kind of drifted away. Some of them died. Some of them gave up and started cloning tomatoes. That's a true story. I didn't make that up. There's money in tomatoes, man. I mean, there's big money in tomatoes. That's called ketchup. But anyway, so the, the interest in cymbidiums is just ravenous. And so we're working like crazy with um, a, a New Zealand grower, Andy Easton, who is now residing in Colombia. And he's still breeding and we're growing his babies. And so we have seedlings. But Mukoyama, I can't wait to see what they bring in. So if you're hungering for cymbidiums, Mukoyama will be there. And also a guy named Joe Santi, who is a very prestigious a hobby grower uh, and he loves spotted and he loves reds. So if you're a cymbidium lover, which so many people in town are, come on out there. The tickets are staying cheap. We are, we're keeping them at 20 again. And so it makes it accessible for everybody who loves nature and loves gardening and specifically orchids. Um, we also have a, a great grower coming in from Hawaii, um, um, Ben Oliveras. He's got Eros orchids very affable guy and um, from the big island. And so those are, and Orchids Limited, Jason Fisher. That's that's a fun website to go and look at. He does a lot of videos and stuff too at his nursery. He's he's young, his father started it and he's all fired up. So if you're stuck with a rainy day, go Google um, Orchids Limited and look at some of their videos. It's um, a great way to learn about some different orchids and maybe how to grow some orchids that you have already. Um, um, and then we're also going to launch this Cocodama thing, which is a sphagnum moss um, method of growing. It's like a, in Japan, it's, it's a well-respected um, way to cultivate orchids. In Japan, they have a round ball and, um, and they spell it K-O-K-E-D-A-M-A. And they they will put the samurai orchid, which I've talked to your audience in the past about the beautiful Neophonetia falcata that Chris, your wife, Lisa, does a good job of growing. And um, and it flowers in the spring and early summer. You perch one of those on that ball of sphagnum moss and it just covers it. So there's an art to creating that. And there's going to be somebody there at the show in our orchid culture area that's going to showcase that. So cool. um, there's there's a bunch of new things and there's going to be different lighting there. And um, so uh, whether you're going to go and do a yoga thing and connect with the spirituality of just the vibe of the of the orchid and all of its um, God, 2000 plus history and um, or you're going to go and have drinks and dance with your friends or you're just going to come and do the show and come and buy orchids in the vendor thing. There's something for everybody. So on, on that note, thank you for inviting us, um, Chris and Leanne and Lisa out in the ether. Yeah. She's probably listening. Yeah, well, come, her come, come to the show. Yeah. March 8th, 9th, and 10th, like yeah. Leanne says, it's very close. 8th, 9th, and 10th, 9 to 5, all three days. And the nursery, our nursery.